This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our website, St. Louis Test Prep, stltest.net, where you can find the three books, including the CPA exam for dummies that comes out September 2014. You'll see a picture of that book down here. You'll also see access to all of my videos. And finally, you'll see instructions on how you can get tutoring on accounting and finance topics. What I wanted to cover today was a very common question that I get that I think is misunderstood, and that is net present value it should be MPV, net present value and internal rate of return. Now, there's two ways you can solve these types of questions. The first way I'm going to do it is using an Excel formula. But another way I'm going to use it to explain, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, is to explain how you can do it using present and future value tables, which I think is important. So I had a student who got a question that said an investment costing $200,000 will reduce operating expense, operating costs by $35,000 a year for 12 years. The required rate of return is 18%. And what I told the student was this is really about a series of cash inflows and outflows. In year zero, it's assumed at the start of the time period, you're going to write a check for $200,000 for the cost, the investment of whatever asset that you're buying, maybe a piece of machinery or equipment. Now, this is a tricky issue with language. It's very common that these questions will say reduce operating costs by $35,000 a year. It's assumed for these questions that because you're reducing costs, you're going to have extra cash because it's cash you don't have to spend on operating costs in this case. So that is going to be a cash inflow of $35,000 a year for 12 years, which is why in years 1 through 12, I have inflows. Another uh, area of confusion with language, you're going to see the rate referred to as the required rate of return. It might be hurdle rate. It might be discount rate. It might say interest rate. What this means is this is the rate of return that you use to discount these payments into the future into today's dollars. And so the question is, what's the present value of this cash outflow plus all these cash inflows? Well, the easy way to do it in Excel, if I click on the cell there, you'll see the NPV formula. And in parentheses, you'll see 0.018 for 18%. And then you'll see that we summed up F7, which is this cell, all the way down to F19. And what it created was, it created a calculation that said using 18% and discounting all these inflows and outflows back to today's dollars, we end up with a negative 27,319. What that means is, is that if we have a project and we add up the inflows and outflows and we end up with a negative number using the rate of return assumption, we should not do that project if we end up with a negative net present value NPV. The student was then asked, well, what about an internal rate of return on the investment ignoring taxes? And I told the student that internal rate of return, you got to remember the word rate. It is the rate that you discount the payments that will create a present value of zero. So what is the rate at which we can add up the inflows and the outflows and come up with a net present value of zero? There's a formula in Excel also, IRR, you see at the top in the formula bar. I added cell F17 to F19, which are the same cells that I have up here. I simply used IRR for these cells. And what I found out was, is that the internal rate of return is 14%. Now I told the student a couple of other things as well. I said, the formula also asks you for a guess on the rate. It will say in parentheses right here, when you pull up the formula originally with no numbers in it, it'll say guess, comma, and then the range of cells F7 to F19. You do not have to put in a rate, a guess. I did not. 
I told the student, you don't see the guess here. What this answer says is that if the payments are discounted at 14%, the net present value is zero. Now, I also told the student, you know, that makes sense because when we discounted at the higher 18% rate, we got a negative net present value. So it makes sense that to get a present value of zero, we would need to use a rate lower than 18%. In this case, it's 14%. Should the investment be undertaken and why? Well, no, it should not be undertaken because the cash flows above generate a negative net present value the product should the project excuse me should be rejected in other words the cash inflows and outflows are not enough given your needed rate of return which is 18% it's not enough to come up with a positive number now the last thing i wanted to do here because i think it's important and it's no longer taught this way really is to show you present value tables now bear in mind that we've got 18% from year 0 to 12. What I could have done to solve this problem is to take the present value of a lump sum, because we're going to look at each of those payments as an individual sum. I could have pulled this up. Mine is off the internet. There's dozens of them out there if you Google it. Here's 18%, and I could have taken periods from 1 out to 19. Um, oh, out years 1 out to 12, I should say. So this column right here, these would be the rates that I would apply to each of those cash flows. So what I could do is I could copy all those formulas over. In fact, I'm just going to put them in there just so you can see. They don't copy over, but um, because the, uh, the way the the uh, this document's formatted. I could take all these percentages. For example, in period one, we discount at eight, what is it, 0.847. In year five, we discount 0.37. So the point is, and I'm going to close this without saving, that I could have taken each one of these payments and used the individual, individual present value factor and multiplied and come up with result and that present value factor with the 200,000 not adjusted because it's in year zero, and the payments in years one through 12 adjusted using the present value factors, I could have added that all up manually and come up with the same 27,319. So it's important that you understand that those are coming from present value tables. So what we did in this problem is talk about net present value and internal rate of return. For this, cat, for this flow of inflows and outflows to see if the project made sense, and because we came up with a negative number, it doesn't make sense to do. That's as far as we'll get today. Remember that we have uh, all the books, the three dummies books, including the CPA exam for dummies that will be out September 2014. Instructions on how you can get tutoring services and links, finally, to all of the videos that I have on my use. YouTube channel separated by type. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.